samedi le 4 mai, déjà. Oh, on est au mois de mai. Oh là là. Déjà quatre jours. Il pleut aujourd'hui. C'est OK. Ça prend de la pluie parce que le sol était très sec. Et si c'est sec, les choses ne poussent pas bien. Non. Ça prend de l'eau à notre planète. Notre planète a le soif. Mm -hmm. Il en faut de la pluie. Mm -hmm. Il en faut. Aujourd'hui, je te parle d'un livre justement sur la planète. Peut-être que tu connais. C'est Mélanie Walsh qui a écrit ce livre. Regarde. Idées écolo pour sauver ma planète. Elle est précieuse, hein? C'est précieux, notre planète. Oui, on est chanceux d'avoir des arbres, du soleil, de la pluie, de l'air pur. Oh, il faut en prendre soin. Ça te donne des trucs dans ça. Est-ce que tu es prêt? Oh, Excuse-moi, tu as passé une bonne fin de semaine? Oui? Ah, oh, ça fait du bien un peu de repos, hein? Mm -hmm. Mais disons que ça fait longtemps qu'on est en repos. <rire> ok, je commence. Je n'oublie pas hmm, d'éteindre la lumière quand je sors d'une pièce. Ah, tu vois? Hmm. Regarde, c'était la page couverture. C'est une ampoule de lumière. Je n'oublie pas d'éteindre la lumière quand je sors d'une pièce. Et tu vois, ça a la même forme que l'ampoule. Et ça dit, éteindre les lumières et utiliser des ampoules éco-énergétiques économise de l'énergie. C'est vrai. Je regarde dans le noir. Et grandu. Je pense... Hmm, C'est beaucoup d'eau, ça, dans le verre. C'est difficile, les pages, parce qu'elles sont, sont différentes. Hein? Oh, je pense à fermer le robinet pendant que je me brosse les dents. Mais oui. Sinon, l'eau coule pour rien. Hein? L'eau coule pour rien, ça dit. Chaque fois que tu fais ce geste de fermer le robinet quand tu brosses tes dents, tu économises 18 verres d'eau. Imagine 18, 10 plus 5 plus 3, ça fait 18 verres d'eau. 18 verres d'eau qui coulent dans le robinet pour rien pendant que tu brosses tes dents. Hmm? Pense-y, c'est important. Je jette toujours, mm -hmm. tu vois, une boîte de jus, je jette toujours mes déchets dans la poubelle. Oui, c'est important, hein? Il ne, il ne faut pas laisser traîner les déchets pour que l'environnement reste propre et sécuritaire. Si on laisse traîner nos déchets partout, la planète va avoir l'air d'une grosse poubelle. C'est pas intéressant de marcher dans les, dans les déchets, puis dans les morceaux, les débris et du plastique. Imagine tout ça. Non. C'est important de jeter ces déchets. Hmm. Dans page, je peux. Hmm, regarde. Oh, je veux pas de neige. Ils annoncent la neige demain. Ah. Je peux. Nourrir les oiseaux en hiver. La nourriture se fait rare l'hiver pour les oiseaux. Les nourrir, les aide à se préparer à la nidification au printemps. Hein? Ils ont besoin de nourriture pour ouvrir au printemps quand ils ont des petits, des petits oisillons, des petits bébés, qu'ils soient bien nourris. Hein? C'est important de les nourrir même l'hiver, pas seulement l'été. Hein? J'utilise, tu peux deviner qu'est-ce que c'est cette, hein? cette idée-là. J'utilise... Les pages recto verso, le papier recto verso. Hein? Tu peux faire un dessin d'un côté et un dessin de l'autre côté. Oui. Si tout le monde faisait de même, la quantité d'arbres utilisés pour faire le papier diminuerait de moitié. C'est vrai. Hein? Parfois, on jette des bouts de papier qui sont encore très bons pour faire un dessin. On peut faire une, une petite liste d'épicerie. Hein? Je rappelle à maman. Hmm. Ou papa, d'éteindre, de débrancher la télévision, tous les appareils électriques, savais-tu ça? Y compris le, 
la télévision consomme de l'énergie quand ils sont même fermés. Oui, même si tu éteins, dès qu'ils sont branchés, ça consomme de l'énergie. Oui. Je savais pas, moi. Je m'amuse à... Regarde, c'est toutes sortes de bouts de carton. Parfois, on reçoit des boîtes par la poste. Je m'amuse à fabriquer des jouets à partir de boîtes usagées. Avant de les jeter, on peut faire plein de bricolages avec ça. Et tu sais que Madame Julie adore les bricolages. Hein? Mm -hmm. On peut réutiliser beaucoup de choses avant de les jeter. Oui, c'est vrai. J'aime. J'aime la pollution? Non, j'aime pas la pollution. C'est nuages de pollution. J'aime me rendre à l'école à pied. Oui, parfois tu peux, mais parfois tu peux pas. Hein? Si l'école est trop loin, moi je pourrais pas aller au travail à pied. Ça serait trop loin. Madame Julie serait pas à l'école de bonheur. Oh non! Éviter de, des voyages non nécessaires en voiture économise l'essence et produit moins de pollution. C'est aussi une occasion de faire de l'exercice quand tu peux te rendre à l'école à pied. Tu peux même aller promener ton chien. Mes chiens à moi, ils font de dos. Non, encore. C'est parce que Mme Julie a été prendre une grande marche avant la pluie. Et ils sont fatigués. Adèle et Penny dorment. Je peux. Regarde, c'est toutes sortes de petits pots de recyclage. Qu'est-ce que tu penses qu'ils font? C'est marqué « graines ». Est-ce que tu peux les utiliser pour planter des fleurs? Ouh. Probablement. Je peux semer des graines et aider les, à les faire pousser. Les plantes purifient l'air. Tu vois, ça fait du bien à l'air qui circule de faire pousser des plantes. Faut pas oublier des arroser par contre. J'aide. Regarde, toutes sortes de déchets. Du verre, du métal, du compost, du plastique et du papier. J'aide. Je pense que tu dois les mettre au bon endroit de conserve, compost, le plastique, le papier, le verre. J'aide à trier les choses à recycler. C'est vrai. Est-ce que ça va tous dans la même poubelle? Non. J'aide à trier les choses à recycler. Plus de la moitié de nos déchets sont recyclables. Plus que la moitié. Imagine, recycler consomme moins d'énergie que d'acheter du neuf. Hein? Si tu utilises ces petites choses-là, on n'a pas besoin de les acheter. Donc, c'est bien. Et ça, c'est tout ça. On fait toutes ces choses-là parce que j'aime ma planète. Il faut en prendre soin, les amis. C'est important. Tu vois, il y a plein d'étoiles. <rire> c'est important de prendre soin de sa planète. Même si on pense que oh, elle est grande, la planète, c'est important. Hmm? Comme ça, ça nous... Ça nous permet de rester dans un environnement, d'habiter dans un environnement qui est tout propre. Puis que ça nous fait sentir qu'on a fait quelque chose pour cette belle planète. Quelque chose de bien. Hey les amis, aujourd'hui, si tu vas dehors, mets tes bottes de pluie, ton manteau de pluie. N'oublie pas, il faut laver nos mains. 20 secondes, tu peux chanter une chanson en lavant tes mains. C'est important. Hey, on se voit demain. Demain, c'est mardi, le 5 mai. Et puis, euh, je ne sais pas l'histoire que je vais choisir, mais je vais y penser aujourd'hui. Et je t'embrasse. À demain, les amis. Au revoir. I'm Shelley Tam Tom and I run the Kensington Heritage Library. I'm going to share a story with you today and it's one of my very favorites. But first I have to tell you that 
This story is being read with permission from Access Copyright on behalf of the publisher. So this story is called Quick as a Cricket and it is written by Audrey Wood and it's illustrated by Don Wood. Illustrations in this book are absolutely fabulous. I'm as quick as a cricket. I'm as slow as a snail. I'm as small as an ant. I'm as large as a whale. Wow. I'm as sad as a basset. I'm as happy as a lark. I'm as nice as a bunny. I'm as mean as a shark. I'm as cold as a toad. I'm as hot as a fox. I'm as weak as a kitten. I'm as strong as an ox. I'm as loud as a lion. Roar! I'm sure you can roar nice and loud like a lion. And I'm as calm as a clam. I'm as tough as a rhino. I'm as gentle as a lamb. I'm as brave as a tiger. I'm as shy as a shrimp. I'm as tame as a poodle. I'm as wild as a chimp. <laughs> Can you even see him in there swinging through the trees? It's kind of tricky to find him, but there he is. I'm as lazy as a lizard. I'm as busy as a bee. Put it all together, and you've got me. So all of those things together made up this person. And guess what? All of those things together probably make up you too. Sometimes we feel small. Sometimes we feel big and strong. Sometimes we feel like we're sad. And sometimes we feel happy, right? There's a song I know that goes with that. And I bet you could sing it with me, a little short version of it. And it goes like this. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're silly and you know it, make a face. If you're silly and you know it, make a face. If you're silly and you know it and you really want to show it. If you're silly and you know it, make a face. If you're sad and you know it, say boo-hoo. <laughs> if you're sad and you know it, say boo-hoo. <laughs> 
If you're sad and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're sad and you know it, say boo hoo. <laughs> if you're mad and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're mad and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're mad and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're mad and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Thank you for being here today and for listening, and I hope you have a really, really happy day. Take care. my story time corner in my home with my little friends up there, my sloths and owls. I hope you'll join me for Rhino Rumpus, my story of the day. It's written by Victoria Allenby and the pictures are by Tara Anderson. Can you see those rhinos on the cover there? All three of them fit in one bathtub. Can you even imagine? I don't think my bathtub is big enough to fit even one rhino in. I think we'll have to measure later. Let's read this story. Check out all those rhinos. You think you could count them all? And take quite a while. Rhino Rumpus by Victoria Allenby and illustrated by Tara Anderson and published by Pajama Press. Thanks Pajama Press. There's another rhino with a stuffy running off. I bet we'll see them later. One little rhino in a mood. Two little rhinos acting rude. Oh dear. Three little rhinos tussling, fighting. Mm, that's not very good, is it? Oh dear. Mama rhino cries, no biting. Ouch. Biting hurts, doesn't it? Ouch, ouch, ouch. One little rhino making faces. Can you make funny faces too? Two little rhinos leave their places. They left their place and knocked the chair over too. Three little rhinos butting heads. Little rhinos in your beds. Now those words are very big, so I bet Mama meant for them to be said very loudly. Two little rhinos getting washed. One little rhino feeling squashed. Oof, I don't know, maybe three rhinos can't fit in a bathtub after all. Little push, little nudge. Three little rhinos will not budge. Are they having fun in there? I don't know if that little one's having so much fun. He looks stuck. Whoop. Stuck like my pages. Fidget, fuss, rump. Huff, ha, rump. Grump, grumble, bump, a rump. Snap, snipe, grunt, gripe. Oh dear. Lots of fighting going on. <gasps> Roar! Rhino rumpus, rhino riot, mama rhino rumbles, quiet. Do you think mama rhino has had quite enough yet? I think she might be catching quite the limit. Dear little rhinos, time to sleep. No little rhinos, not a peep. Hmm. Look at that. Rhinos have to brush their teeth too. I wonder if they need special toothbrushes for all those teeth. Here's a kiss and here's a song. Oh, from your hooves to the tip of your horn. Oh, I've loved you since the day you were born. And when you wake, please get along. Do you think they'll get along any better tomorrow morning? I hope so for Mama. Oh, and they're reading a story too. 
Mama Rhino's looking tired. One little rhino gets inspired. Here's a wink, a nod, a shrug. Three little rhinos, one big hug. Look how big that hug is. That's a huge rhino hug. And now we have one, two, three rhinos sleeping. But look at those snores. They're coming from off the page. Who else could be snoring? Let's have a look and see. <gasps> Silly mama, I sleep in the chair. I hope mama gets a lot of rest tonight. And I hope you had a great time with our story time. Hope to see you all again soon. Bye. Hello everyone and welcome back to Language for Vu. My name is Peter and I hope you're all doing okay. I know, it's now June, which means the weather is getting warmer, the sun is shining for longer, and it's great to be outside. Today on our episode, we are going to talk about animals. Animals are great. Maybe you have a pet at home. Maybe you have a dog or a cat or a bird. Or maybe you have a more unique pet, like a hedgehog, or maybe even a snake, or a frog. Who knows? Animals are everywhere. You'll see them outside, flying in the air, or swimming in the water. And some are big, and some are very, very small. Yeah, they come in all shapes and sizes. So on today's show, we are going to be talking a lot about animals. We're going to see some animals that live on PEI and some animals that live in other places in the world. And if you want to send us a picture of your pet or an animal you've seen, please do. Send us an email at languageforvu at gmail.com. We would love to see your pictures of animals. And these days, it's so easy to go outside and see some. So if you want to send us a picture of a big animal or a small animal or a bird, please do. Okay, we are going to first start off with some PEI animals. So we're going to go visit our friend, Miss Jennifer, who took a little walk in the woods. If you are quiet, you can see many animals in the woods. This is a squirrel. It likes to eat seeds and nuts. But this one isn't happy. It is looking at something. What is it? Oh, it's another squirrel who wants food too. Look out, here it comes. This is a baby squirrel. It is looking for its mother. It wants to go home. This is a chipmunk. It has black and white stripes on its back. Chipmunks like to eat seeds and nuts, but this one is eating an insect. Yuck! This is a muskrat. It has a fat body, brown fur, and a long, thin tail. Muskrats like to live in wet places. They like to come out late in the afternoon and at night. Muskrats eat the plants that grow in the water. They eat the animals that swim in the water, too. What else is in the pond? This is a mink. It has a long, thin body, and it is dark brown. 
They like to live near the water too. It likes to eat meat. Oh, look at its long neck. It can smell people, so it will run away quickly. Oh, what is this? It's so cute. It is a vole. Voles live in the ground. They love to eat plants. This one looks very happy when it's eating green leaves. It can smell people, so it will hide. Goodbye, Vol. This is a fox. Foxes eat many things, but do not feed a fox. They are cute but they might bite you. Look for these animals when you go for a walk. We're on the horse farm with Mr. Scott and Ms. Kelly. This is Cheetah. She's one year old and she's really fast and she wants to say hello. This is Echo. She's three and she's really fast and likes to eat grass. Then we have Chip and his mom. Chip is still little. He was one of our pets of the day. And his mom is old and big. She's 17 years old. And Chip is now two months old. Thanks, Mr. Scott and Ms. Kelly. Your horses are beautiful. Fun. Today, we're going to practice some prepositions by looking at some pictures with some animals. So prepositions of place are words that tell where something is. And that's in relationship to something else. So words like in, on, Side, between, in front of, under are all prepositions. All right, let's get started. So I want you to look at the picture and tell me where is the cat? Try to use a preposition in your sentence. I'll give you a second for each picture. Cat is on the table. Next one. Where is the dog? The dog is on the chair. Where is the cat? The cat is in a box. Where is the dog? The dog is in front of the bookcase. How are these going? Are you getting them? Ooh, where is the dog in this picture? The dog is under a table. Find the cat in this picture? Where is the cat? The cat is between the pillows. Mm, the cat is also under the painting. See, sometimes there's different ways to tell where something is. Ooh, a different animal this time. Where is the horse? The horse is behind the tractor. Where is the dog in this picture? The dog is in front of the mailbox. Where's the cat? The cat 
is on some leaves. Hmm, where is the dog? The dog is under a bench. Where is the cat? The cat is in a basket. Wow, who would think a cat could fit in a basket so tiny? Where is the dog? The dog is beside the fire hydrant. Ooh, last one, where is the cat? cat is between the television and the bookshelf. Oh, did you notice that I used a different word? Earlier we called it a bookcase, now I called it a bookshelf. They're kind of the same thing. Great job everyone! I hope you got some of those prepositions and some of those vocabulary words. Keep practicing them! Let me introduce the cat. I don't have the cat, but my teacher has. Have a look. It is a girl. Her name is Lily. <laughs> She's 12 years old. She is Tabby domestic cat. She is gray with straps. Cats can sleep for 13 to 14 hours a day. Cats can hunt small animals, such as mice and rats. A group of cats is called a clogger. A male cat is called Tom. A female cat is called Queen. Young cats are called kittens. Pony means that cats are happy. Cats cannot speak, they meow. When cats want food, they meows are nice. When cats are not happy, they meows are angry. Cats can see black and white, gray and blue. Cats cannot see another colors. Animals of Africa Animaux d'Afrique Elephants Des éléphants Camels Un chameau A rhinoceros Des rhinoceros A chimpanzee Un chimpanzé An oryx Des oryx, a crocodile, un crocodile, lions, une lionne, a zebra, des zèbres, a leopard, un léopard, an impala. Un Nepala, a giraffe, une giraffe, a hippopotamus, des hippopotames, monkeys, un singe, animals of Africa, animaux d'Afrique. Hello, I'm Mrs. Rusev. And I'm a teacher here on Prince Edward Island, and I teach my students English. Today, I want to teach you a fun game to play. It's springtime, and in spring, there are lots of new baby animals. So I'd like to teach you a game to learn baby animal names. First, you need to pick your favorite animals. For me, I chose a horse, a dog, a bear, an owl, a fish, and a butterfly. Next, you have to find the baby animal names. If you know them, you can just write them down, but if you don't, you can look them up on the internet. For example, I knew that a baby horse was a foal. I also knew that a baby dog was a puppy, and a baby bear was a cub. But I didn't know that a baby owl was an owlet, or that a baby fish was a frog. I did know that a baby butterfly was a caterpillar. 
Once you've found all your names, you put each animal name, an adult and a baby, on a card. Then you take the cards and put them face down on the table. Mix them up so you don't know where they are. Okay, so now you get to pick your animal names and see if you can make a pair. So I'm going to turn over this one. That's a foal. That's a baby horse. I wonder where the other baby horse is. Maybe it's here. No, nope, that's a caterpillar. Turn them over again and try another time. All right, let's try a dog. All right, let's try this one. A dog and a puppy. That's a pair. Take those and I move on to my next pair. All right, let's try a horse. Now I saw a foal earlier. I wonder where it is. Hmm. I think it might be here. You're right, there it is a horse and a foal. There we go. So I've made another pair. You can also play this game with your family. Just take turns and the person with the most pairs at the end of the game wins. That's all for now. Have fun. Stay safe and be kind. Bye-bye. We have two pets of PEI today. One is Oliver the Hedgehog. He's four months old and he enjoys digging. And the favorite thing about him is he is silly and cute. And then we have Phoenix the Gecko. Awesome name, Phoenix. He is two years old. He likes to eat crickets. He loves to sleep and eat. And Maria Steele sent these pictures into us and she said, Phoenix is cute and unique. So thanks Maria for sending us your pets. We want to see your pets. So please send pictures of your pets to us here at language at gmail.com. Remember to include your pet's name, how old they are, their favorite snack, what they like to do and why you like your pet. We look forward to seeing all the great pets of Prince Edward Island. Thank you. Welcome to Drawing the Sounds. Today we're drawing Happy Kitty. This is Happy Kitty. To draw Happy Kitty, you will need a pencil, an eraser, a pencil sharpener, and a black marker or a black pencil crayon to outline. And maybe some color markers or color pencils to color. To draw Happy Kitty, we start with a circle for Happy Kitty's head. Just like this. Happy Kitty has two big eyes. We can make another circle. For one eye and one more circle for another eye. Happy Kitty has a small nose. We can make a triangle for Happy Kitty's nose. Happy Kitty has two ears. We can make a triangle for Happy Kitty's ears and one more triangle inside. And one more ear. One triangle and two triangles. Happy Kitty has a mouth. We can make a curved line like this and another curved line like this to make her mouth. And 
one more curved line and one more curved line. Happy Kitty has some light shining in her eyes. We can make a circle to show the light. One circle. And another shape to show the light. And on the other eye, a circle. And another shape to show the light. Happy Kitty has whiskers. One, two, three whiskers, and three whiskers on the other side. One, two, three. Happy Kitty has a body. We can make her leg with a long line and a short line and three circles for her toes. And we can make another leg with a short line and a long line and three toes. One, two, three. And we can make her back legs with a curving line and two toes. One, two. And another back leg with a curving line and two toes. One, two. Now, in our last lessons, we talked about the letter Y. At the beginning of a word like Yasmin and Yak, the Y makes the Y sound. And at the end of a short word like fly and sky, it makes an I sound. But for happy kitty, it's a long word and the Y comes at the end of the word. We can see happy, kitty, city, baby, sorry. In these words, the Y, here is the uppercase Y, here is the lowercase Y. Happy, kitty, the Y makes an E sound. So I colored happy kitty orange and pink in her ears and blue for her eyes and nose, pink in her mouth, and a dark orange for her stripes. But you can call her, her any color you like. Thanks for coming today. Thank you, Mr. Sheehan. I always wanted to learn how to draw a cat, or at least draw a cat better than my originals. So I have Happy Kitty, is in the city, and he's looking kind of pretty, but I probably should color him. Maybe I can make the cat black, or maybe I can make it white and brown or orange. Cats can be many different colors, and they're always great to see, especially when they're happy. And thank you, Mr. Sheehan, for telling us about all the different ways Y can be used. It can be a tricky letter. So it's nice to see it in sky and fly, but it was also cool to see it in happy and city. So it can sound like an E or an I. I know, it's a tricky letter. So if you want to send us your pictures though, that would be great. We would love to see your pictures of anything you've drawn with Mr. Sheehan. So send us an email with your picture at languageforboo at gmail.com. Now that is all the time we have for our show today. I hope you learned a lot about all the animals you may see on PEI and around the world. And if again, and again, if you have a picture of an animal and you want to send it in, please do. Or if you want to send in a picture of your pet, even better. Okay, so that is our show for today. So please, if you have any questions, send them in. And also remember, be safe, be kind, and do your best. And we'll see you next time on Language for Vu. Bye! Au revoir!